Good morning, this is Cody Hendrickson, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at some of the more advanced features we can do when drawing using App Inventor. Just a quick little demo, we can see how we can make some stuff happen. Let's go ahead and take a look at the App Inventor designer window first and see what's going on. Then we'll go ahead and take a look at the actual app itself in action, and then go look at the code that makes that happen. As you can see right here, inside my screen one, I have this quick little, <clears throat> as you can see, I've got my screen one, I have um, inside my uh, viewer area, I've got a couple different sets of buttons. I have a canvas right here. It's a great way to take a look at the components hierarchy and see we can actually see how that works. So in my screen one, I have all my basic components. I'm using the feature of some arrangements right here. I have a vertical arrangement with two horizontal arrangements inside it. It allows me to have a little bit more organization or structure to my um, GUI layout. And so inside my menu, I have a button holder and a text holder reflecting the fact that I have buttons on that top part and text areas on the bottom part. So I can use that to organize it. As you can also see, inside my component hierarchy, I'm using the button naming convention so we can describe what the button is as well as what it does by simply just giving me the name of like load button, save button, reset button, and delete button. That same text is reflected up here on the different buttons themselves. Delete all in caps just to make sure we keep an eye on it. Inside my text holder, I have my counter label and my number field so I can see what's going on within those different areas. I have a drawing canvas that has a name that's a canvas from over here in the drawing animation section. I have a user notifier and a file object. We'll be taking a look at how they work later on because they're used in case we have any errors and if we want to do with anything we're working with in case of using file management. And finally, over here in the media section, I have a transparent PNG that's been loaded to use basically to hold nothing in place. And we'll talk about that as we go through. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual app itself in action. As you can see right here, I can draw on my app. Ooh, amazing, great stuff. I can reset it, and it's a new color. And I can draw again, reset it again. Oh my gosh, that's so amazing. I got this great, lovely picture. I can draw and reset it all the time I want. I can also load pictures that I've saved and save pictures. And so the way that we can have that happen, if I'm gonna go ahead and do a cute little smiley face right here. So we'll do a couple eyes. Actually, let's make it so it's a little better. And draw a little circle in here. There we go. And do a little bit of coloring right here. Mr. Hendrickson's amazing art skills. Yay! And we're going to hit save. That now saves that file inside my document. So it's inside my actual application and my device as well. And I can go ahead and reset that. Wipes it all out. I can go ahead and I can type in a number right here. I can go to 1 and say OK and load an image, and boom, I've got my picture that I just saved, because that happens to be the number that was right there. If I can reset that again, it's gone, no big deal. And take that out, I can put in a three right here, say okay, and hit load. And there's a picture I made earlier with a bunch of threes in it, including the three in binary, zero, zero, one, one. Hey, pretty cool stuff. Let's go ahead and reset that one more time. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how this code is working, what's going on behind the scenes to make this app action, <clears throat> to make this app happen. So again, like always, we're gonna go ahead and go to the blocks section. As you can see right here inside my blocks section, I have my regular blocks section right here where I'm doing my stuff. I have two global variables I'm using with. I have a global variable called save file and a global variable called counter. Global variable save file starts initialized at current image dash, so I can use it to actually save information. And I have a counter that starts off at one. In order to make drawing happen, it's really, really hard. All I have to do is go into my canvas object and I grab in that instance of the canvas. I grab up the dot dragged event. The dragged event is what happens when you drag your cursor across the canvas itself. There are some other ones you can worry about, but the one we're using for drawing purposes is dragged. I then call the draw line method, which also exists inside the canvas object, and I give it values of x1, y1, x2, y2. It can do a draw line from x1 to x, um, x1, y1 to x2, y2, a little tiny bit. And so the way I start that off is from previous x and previous y to current x and current y. So it just keeps track where was I before, where am I now, boop, 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 boop. And it draws those cute little lines that we just saw me do a minute ago. Go ahead and collapse that out. And so now what we want to do is actually see what's going on when we're actually doing some drawing and events happening within that. So we've hit the drawing on that. Now let's see what happens when I can do the reset, the load, and the save, as well as the delete. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the reset button, because that's the one that we're going to start off with. It gives us a uh, just a nice little blurb to work with. And the reset button, when I click the reset button, again, just using the dot click method that exists inside that button object, I then call this drawing canvas background color, and I make a brand new color using random integers for the red, green, and blue values of 0 to 255 because there's 256 different categories. <clears throat> because there's 256 different values that we could possibly have for red, green, and blue values. Then I also do at the very last right there, I set my drawing canvas's background image to transparent.png because 
when I do those drawings I've been doing, I actually save those images. It sets the image of the actual canvas itself to a new image, that picture they just drew with the background color and whatever I drew on it. And so in order to erase that, I have to replace that with a brand new blank image. That's what transparent.png is because transparency is only stored in PNGs, not JPEGs. So we have that right there. Not a lot of work, but that's what that's doing. Okay, then we have our load button and our delete button and our save button. So let's take a look at our save button first. The save button uses those two global variables, save file and counter, to build information and save that in. So the first thing it's gonna do, is it's gonna set global save file, the text value, to be current image, dash, then global counter, and then PNG. So I'm making a string value of what it's gonna be saving it. Then I'm gonna call evaluate but ignore result, which means do this, but don't give me what comes back from it. And I'm gonna say on that, call drawing canvas.save and as, and then get slow will save file. So I'm gonna get that file that I just named, that right here in this block, save it, and ignore what comes back, because I don't actually need that information. And I have to do that because this one has, as you can see, that output plug. So I have to plug it into something that I can hold on to it. Then I'm going to set my counter to go up by one, because I want my counter to re um, go up by time so I can actually keep saving new values as I go through the game, or in this case, trying the picture. The final thing we need to do is I'm going to set my counter label.txt to the get global counter. So I'm going to say, hey, this is what my new counter is at. Where am I at right now? And it's that new value right there. Boom. And it plugs that back up right there. When I click the load button, I'm going to check and see if there, uh, first, if there's anything typed inside that text box field that we have right there at the top. So I was like, do I want to, is there anything I can look at? I can grab a number. And if there is, I'm then going to go to slash storage slash SD card slash, and then current image number field dot text dot PNG. So I'm going to grab that value that's inside there, put it in that path and see if I can actually grab that value and retrieve the, the image from that. And if, it, uh, if, if that number is there, if there's something that's typed in that field, I'll grab that and I'll put it in. If it's not there, then I'm gonna set the canvas drawing to just be transparent colors. It's gonna give a blank color right there and boom, we're good to go. So load button is gonna either go and look in for that. And the way we do that is with that slash storage slash SD card. So on that join right here, this is how I'm building text together in order to look inside the actual phone or emulator or tablet I'm plugged into. I need to use the slash storage slash SD card slash to then read inside that spot and actually get the information out of it. And so that's how the load button itself works. Finally, if I wanna delete a file, I do, I, this does take a bit of work. This works a lot better on actual tablet or phone device that you're working to rather than using the emulator. Especially if you haven't, if, <clears throat> when you're using the delete button, this works really a lot better if you've actually installed the actual application to the phone, the tablet, or even the emulator using the side loading apparatus. Because when it actually installs it, it actually retrieves those actual files that are saved inside that. When we're working with the emulator or App Inventor companion app, it doesn't actually have the full access to the phone as easily and it goes a little bit slower. And that's a little bit of a problem we have to worry about. But the delete button will work on that. And then what we do is we check to see if the number field itself again is greater than zero. Is there actually something in there? Then if it is, I'm gonna go and inside the file management of this device, phone, tablet, whatever, and I say, I want to delete the file that's called slash storage slash SD card slash current image number dot text dot PNG. And it will delete that file from there. And that's what we do. So we can actually go through and delete those files as we work with them. And so again, we can have this quick little app. We can do it, we can draw on stuff, we can make some fun stuff. You can do this to make a lot even more fun things by adding more features to the drawing. And that's something you'll do in class as we work on this. But this is a great way you can actually play with and work with it and go from there. Thanks again and have a great day. Cheers.